Well, as you can see, I'm once again wearing my cap that says Black Lives Matter. And I have to tell you, I'm very particular about messages uh, that I wear on my clothes, on my person, or messages uh, that, you know, maybe a sign in my yard or a sign on my vehicle. Because whenever we display messages, it implies that it is something that we are, are associated with, something that we uh, support, or uh, maybe uh, in a way something that we are marketing to the world. Uh, so we're speaking loudly when we wear messages on our clothes, on our person. And of course, it says something that uh, that we have knowledge of. That is something that we have knowledge of. And I'm not one to jump on every bandwagon that comes to town or, or stand up and speak up for every cause that comes down the pike. And I don't blindly sign up for every dog and pony show that shows up, okay? Uh, that's just not me. I like to do a little research, and, uh, and I like to know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't wear this for the sake of the organization that is called Black Lives Matter. I know very little about the organization, so this is not in support of the organization. I wear it because I support the idea and because of the plight of our people in American society. And this is a strong message. And because of the problems for black people in America, I especially support black people of America. Now, does that mean that I only support black people in America? Of course not. I think you know better than that. Does that mean to me only black lives matter? Absolutely not. And you know what? I really don't think that's what anyone else is saying or that they mean. Now, my understanding is that we are really saying, or what we are really saying, is that Black Lives Matter too, all right? Or that Black Lives Matter also. I mean, in a society where the government, uh, the police, and the white, and the black, and the brown, and the red, and the yellow people of America don't seem to value black lives, and where black lives don't seem to matter, it becomes necessary for us to inform America and the world and ourselves that yes, while all life matters, black lives matter also. Okay? It doesn't mean we matter any more than anyone else. It just means that we matter too. And uh, in what seems to be an effort to water down our message, there are those who counter that message with white lives matter or all lives matter or blue lives matter, meaning law enforcement. And of course they matter. But when you see people like that, these are usually people that I believe just miss the message altogether. Or they are possibly people for whom black lives really don't matter. Because we know that we have people like that. Now, this is my take, so don't hate, all right? Well, hopefully that takes care of the cap, all right? Now, thank you for joining me each and every Thursday uh, for my take, where I talk about anything and everything under the sun, and you already know I'm subject to talk about anything. Amen. I want to give a word to our parents regarding our children and a word to our adults regarding the youth of our society, and that word is, Never let go of their hand. Never let go of their hand. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we are to continue teaching them, uh, nurturing them, nourishing them. Keep their hand in your hand. Not a hand to hold them back. Not a hand to hold them down. But your hand of comfort, your hand of security and stability, your hand of encouragement, and your hand of love and support. Amen. Never let go of their hand. Keep their hand in your hand of patience, your hand of understanding, your hand of forgiveness. There will be times when no doubt they will attempt to break away from your hand, to pull their hand away from yours, but never let go of their hand. I mean, it is important that we never let go of that hand because that is our God-ordained responsibility as parents and as adults. What is that responsibility? To care for the youth of our families 
and of our society. Do you not know that it's our responsibility, it is our responsibility to walk them through the rough terrain of life. It is our responsibility to protect them, guide them, and prepare them for a prosperous future and a long future. Even in adulthood, they need our knowledge, they need our wisdom, they need our love and support, they need our touch, and they need our understanding. They need our patience. I mean, when you look at it, with the divide between parent and child, adult and youth growing even wider and wider and at a faster pace, it takes more of an effort and more consciousness and patience and persistence, I mean, nowadays, in order to hold their hand. I mean, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination with them constantly pulling away from us and, uh, and, and not so much because they don't like us, not so much because uh, they don't want us holding their hand, but they are trying to grow and stretch and flap their wings that they might soon be able to take flight into adulthood and become major contributors to society. All right? So it's not a bad thing. They're, they're trying to grow up. So when I talk about holding their hand, I'm not talking about holding them back. I want to say to the youth of America, let us hold your hand, okay? I know you may be strong-willed and independent and have great knowledge and wisdom, but please let us hold your hand. You know, perhaps someday you'll be glad you did. I mean, this is a tough world we're living in, all right? And I know you have access to unlimited resources, but please let us hold your hand. Stop pulling away from us. You know what? The more valuable something or someone is, the greater the supervision, the greater level of maintenance, and the greater level of security surrounding that thing or that person employed. I mean, when you look around, people of importance are surrounded by security. Things of importance are surrounded by security. And because of the value placed on our youth and their importance to our society and our future, they require a high level of maintenance. They require a high level of supervision. And they require, whether they believe it or not, whether they know it or not, they require a high level of security. You know, what our youth may not realize and what you may not realize is that our youth are sitting on top of a gold mine. <laughs> Amen. Not only are they valuable, but what they are sitting on is valuable. What they have within them is valuable. They possess riches of opportunity. They possess riches of potential. They possess riches of intellect and they possess riches of youth and energy and endurance and stamina. You know, something that some of us have lost somewhere along the way. They possess riches of ingenuity and creativity. They possess secret solutions known only to God, to the problems and issues of this world. In other words, what we have in our youth is a treasure trove of answers, solutions, and gifts, and talents, and abilities placed within a valuable container that demand the highest level of security and protection. I'm talking about our youth. I'm talking about our young people. And at a time when we are thought of or called on the least, at least that's the way we feel anyway, our youth need us the most. In a time of mandated social distancing, we need to draw closer to our youth without smothering them. In a time of advanced technology and communication that tends to cause our youth to communicate, communicate with us less, <laughs> we need to be sure to hold their hand. Yes, my friend, they will encounter some busy, dangerous highways in life, and they will need us. They will be confronted with some treacherous uh, intersections in life, some tumultuous river crossings. They will be faced with some hills and valleys in life that are better navigated if we are holding their hand. 
I mean, danger is lurking around every corner, ready to strike unsuspecting souls, waiting to strike the rebellious and the disobedient. Please hear me. Dangers everywhere waiting to strike the innocent and the ignorant and the unlearned. The gullible. To every parent, to every adult, please never let go of their hand. These are valuable containers carrying valuable cargo and must be protected at all costs. Our love for them, our concern for them should cause us to hold their hand. Our responsibility for them and our responsibility to them demand that we hold their hand. The future of our families, the future of our communities and our nation dictate that we hold their hand. The security and stability of our society call for us to hold their hand. Their survival and sanity and our survival and sanity require that we hold their hand. Never let go of their hand. Now to our youth, to our young people, our sweet people, that's what I call them, our sweet people. May I put in a personal request for you? First of all, I want you to know that, that I love you and I support you and I'm praying for you. I want you to know that up front. I want you to know that indeed you are sitting on top of a gold mine. You have great potential, great possibilities. You possess great riches and valuables. Cash in on it and don't let it go to waste. Don't surrender what God has given you. Don't surrender what your parents have imparted to you to Satan and don't allow anyone to steal it or take it or talk you out of it. Protect what's there. Nurture what is there. Develop what is there and use what is there to help bring about change to a society that is in bad need of a fresh breath of air. And I'm telling you up front, I'm never letting go of your hand. I mean, you can talk about me, tug, do I mean, you can pull and tug and fuss and cuss all you want, but I'm not letting go of your hand. I love you too much for that. I mean, I love your independence. I love your courage. And I love the idea that you think you can do anything even without uh, us. <laughs> you know, those things you think you can do without us. But I'm not letting go of your hand. Okay, I mean, you go ahead, do what you got to do, but I am not letting go of your hand. I particularly love your sense of relevance and importance that you feel to society, to your family, to your community, to your nation, and you know that you matter. I love that. And you know that you are essential to the working and success of society. I love that in you. I am impressed by your maturity and your persistence or even stubbornness and being seen and heard, but I'm still not letting go of your hand. I'm just not going to do it. Now, back, back to my request. And again, I want to make a few requests of you, not just for my benefit, for my sake, but for your sake and for the sake of the world. First thing I want to tell you, stand your ground. Speak your mind and don't sell your soul or sacrifice your dignity. Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, you are gifted and positioned for success. Victory is already yours. It's yours to lose. Don't lose it. Dare to be different. Don't, don't let everybody else determine your identity or your destiny. You don't have to be what they are and you don't have to do what they do. And you don't have to say what they say. Be you. And listen, and be satisfied with being you. Express yourself and be yourself without compromise. You don't have to compromise anything. Love you, respect you, and be satisfied with you. You know what I'm seeing? Too many of you are suffering from a self-image deficiency. God loves you, not love yourself. Listen, get noticed without being noticed, without being, without going overboard, you know, because there are a lot of people out there trying to get attention and they're jumping through all kinds of hoops and loops trying to get people to pay attention to them. And you don't have to do that. 
There are people out there that are trying, they're trying their best to get noticed. They want people to see them. They want people to hear them, all of that. But let me tell you something, my friend. You don't have to do that because, listen, here's what I'm learning is that when people crave that kind of attention, when they want to be seen and heard like that, they will almost do, do almost anything in order to get noticed. So here's, here's, here's another, my, my request now to you is that get noticed without being noticed. But I know that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but get noticed without being noticeable. In other words, don't be out there screaming, look at me, look at me. You, you don't have to dress that way. You don't have to look that way. Carry yourself in such a way that people will gladly make an effort to give attention to you. Make them go out of their way to notice you. Are you hearing me? Listen, know your rights and exercise and practice them and protect them. All right? Next, here's my, my, another request. Get involved in the political process on every level, local, state, and national level. Get involved. You have much to offer. Listen, bring in a new brand of politics to America. One that shows you don't have to be low down or cutthroat, corrupt in order to get things done. Amen. Please understand, my friend, that life can be a short-lived experience. Value life and value yourself and live life to the max. Love yourself. Love your family. Love your country. And most of all, love the Lord. Now, that's my take. What do you have to say? Sound off. Never let go of their hand.